Hama Yuen is with me at her studio with uh, this is your most recent commission, you told me? My most recent commission is here on the loom. I'm about to take it off. So the weaving is complete and I'm just starting the finishing and I'm binding off the, the top row. Um, there's a, a hem that I wove at the top and I'm, I'm now binding it off and then I will cut the strings and tie them. How long would it take a piece like this to make? Um, a, a piece like this takes two and a half to three months if, if I am weaving full time. Yeah. There is a design process, first of all. Um, uh, I, I, this is a commission, so I worked with the clients who are actually in Edmonton. Um, they sent me photos of the wall that they wanted to work for and paint chips, and I did a number of drawings for them. And is this going to be in a private home or yes. a... Yes, it's going to be in a private home. home. Yeah. Beautiful. You, you might want to look at the front of it, though. That's yes. the back. You're looking at the back. Yeah, you're looking at the back. So you can see the, uh, the design part of it, and this is the drawing that I did. I actually did a, a series of drawings, so, so this is the actual drawing, and I had made out a grid um, when I enlarged it to do, to do the tapestry. And, um... So you design it, you draw it first? You I, yes. This grid? Yes, I, um... It, it was a series of, a series of drawings, and they, they actually were drawn, like, like this, and I'm weaving it on its side. And we'll see when we'll see when the work comes off the loom. I haven't even decided if it will go like this, or you know, if that's all right too. So, so it it sort of got warmer. <laughs> yes, as I proceeded with it. And um, and very often my, you know, my process is like that. It sort of develops as I go. I'm. Um, is it possible to move a little bit this? Uh... So, so it's woven. It's woven row by row, really row by row, or area by area, starting at the bottom and weaving up, and you can see there's a, a, like a green, about an inch of weaving, which is like a hem that will be turned under. And then I start to build, slowly build the design, um, weave the design, weave it sort of section by section or row by row. And my feeling about this was um, almost as if the, the lines of color that start out almost like in a quite linear way, um, op almost like the, they opened up, like the colors opened up to reveal the wavelengths of all the colors in between. That's sort of energetically, that's what I felt was happening. I felt tremendous kind of opening in this tapestry, which um, I've really enjoyed. A, a, good, a good tapestry is one that you don't really want to finish because you enjoy weaving it so much, and, and this is one of them. So I'm very happy about that. It's beautiful. Okay. Was it your idea for this um, a pattern, or was it theirs? No, it's it's my idea. Yes, occasionally a, a client will sort of tell me what they want, sort of a, a rough general, say, subject matter. Um, but usually, sort of intuitively, a, when I see the place and sit and talk to people, I get a feeling of what they like and what they might like to see. And I, I do a number of drawings. Actually, I did several themes for this client, and, and this is the theme that they, they selected. So, yeah. But I will just um, keep. It has a very festive look. Yes. Yeah, it's very happy and yes. lots of color. And, uh, like a celebration of... Uh... 
Yeah, they, they wanted color and I, I was um, a little bit concerned about sort of different colors um, side by side, you know, reds against blues, against greens, against yellows. Um, and um, and I, I mentioned that to them and they said, no, they, they, like, they like color and they, they liked the, the colors um, sort of touching each other. So, um, so I, I'm, I was happy about that. When I was on the other side, I have to tell you, it looks nice from the other side too. <laughs> people, people say that to me. They, they, some people say they, they like the back. Um, the ends are very nice. Um, I studied in Finland many years ago, and um, one of the Finnish types of weaving is raya or ruya, almost like rug, and it's a, a thick piled knotted technique that gives a pile even thicker than this. And uh, when I first came back from Finland, my, my first exhibition in Toronto at the University of Toronto was a, a series of raya, raya weavings that were all thick piled. Um, that in the uh, in the '70s, actually. Yeah. Beautiful. So I'm going in between every warp thread here to bind it off at the top, and. Um, And this, you can see there's a, a hem of just plain weaving at the top, too, that will be folded back. Kind of like the, the hem of a, a garment. So, so, so tapestry is, is like a woven fabric, actually, meant to hang on the wall. And it, it's, um, it's really quite ancient, um, the technique. Uh, the technique of weaving is Neolithic. It's wonderful. Do you make your own looms? Or? Yes, a lot of the looms are, are handmade. Uh, some of them were, were made by me, but the truth is I'm not a really very good carpenter. Um, but I've had uh, some good carpenters make uh, um, most of my looms, especially the ones that I use for community tapestry projects where we, um, we weave in different locations so the looms have to come apart. Um, and basically, as you can see, the, the loom is four pieces of wood. And with this loom, it's nails at the bottom and nails at the top. And then the warp is a continuous warp that's strung between the nails. And for the community um, project looms... They're the, smaller. The four, well, the four pieces of wood come apart. These, there is, like this one, there is a peg that, you know, this is, there's a slot and a slot here, and this top beam goes through it, and then this holds it. So it's a really very simple construction. The, um, the pegs, the warp is rounder on the pegs. And I have two of these uh, community project looms that come apart. This one is, is held together by bolts. And uh, this one I took to France with me to, um, to direct a community project for the Bibliothèque de Lyon, the Lyon libraries. Um, uh, and this design was actually copied for a project that I directed in England called the Big Weave Project that is still continuing. So uh, a group of people in, um, in England, um, in Reading actually, uh, learned about my community projects and um, um, decided to start a project called the Big Weave and invited me to come and direct it and to teach uh, members of the staff of Maiden Erling Community Art School how to do community weaving projects. And, uh, and this is a poster from, from, from the Big Weave Project in England. It was funded by the British Arts Council and the arts colleges. And um, yeah, and so we went to a number of different locations and. Uh, and wove in public, the public weaves on these projects. It's quite wonderful. And Beautiful. So you travel a lot? I travel quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know that you're working with um, your d daughter a lot. Is she traveling with you or she's on her own? Sometimes we travel together. We travel to schools. Uh, we did a, a wonderful community project with a school in Mirabel uh, a month ago 
uh, we did a tie-dye project where each child, there were about 400 students in the school, they each did a, a foot by foot um, tie-dye. So we sort of brought all the materials and taught everyone how to do it. And then each square is assembled together to make banners to go from the ceiling of the cafeteria. And it functions as both a sound a buffer because a cafeteria can be a noisy place with kids and, and something very beautiful that they've all made. So community projects are wonderful because the public participates in the making of its own public art. So there is this ownership and pride um, and love for the work of art that's installed in that building, you know, a community center, a library, a school, um, even a, um, a city council hall. Um, you know, when the community has come together to make the work. It, the citizens own that, and uh, it's, it's really wonderful. Very often our public art is sort of sometimes un, um, unreachable, ununderstandable. Sometimes it's negative, <laughs> and, uh, and, and it doesn't really make for a happy mix. And uh, uh, these community projects, um, there's, you know, there's just so much enthusiasm and love and good energy that goes into them. Some of your um, uh, artwork looks uh, like big carpets, big rugs, and others they look like uh, blankets, other they look like uh, they have different, um, uh, they look like objects of art. You, I mean, you, it's hard to really categorize, they're really art uh, objects. So um, are, are they, 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 they fall under these categories? Art, <laughs> yes. Yes, I, I consider myself an artist. I, um, I did a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, first of all, and then I did um, uh, graduate studies, and I apprenticed with a tapestry artist, and, and, um, and I, I work as an artist, you know, in developing your designs, in drawing, um, and then in interpreting the drawings in tapestry. Uh, it's very much an art form, and it's an ancient art form. For example, this one. Yes, this is um, this tapestry is called Coming In, and it's from uh, a series of ten large pieces. They were all this size um, that I did in the early '90s, light refraction tapestries. And uh, this is number seven or eight, I think, Coming In. Uh, the tapest the first tapestry there is also one of them called Enter the Spiral from the same series. Yeah. Yeah, enter the spiral. So light refraction tapestries, it was really an intuitive exploration of energy flow patterns, light, energy, sound. Everything moves in sound waves, spirals, um, yeah, rays, rays of light. So one of the themes that has fascinated me is, um, is energy, energy and light. Uh, and... Um, so, so very often, light and energy are kind of depicted in the tapestries. Uh, you, can, you can see it sort of very clearly in, for instance, this one over here called Ribbons of Light. And, um, and this other tapestry, uh, Offering its by the Rock, where almost like the light. The light both comes out and comes down. And this tapestry, uh, this tapestry is sort of an image of an experience I had. I, I took a trip to Canyon de Chez in Arizona. Um, and um, as, as I entered um, close to the canyon, and Canyon de Chez has spider rock, which is the Navajo sort of sacred site and the, the spiritual home of the Navajo people. And you may know the Navajo. The Navajo people are, are a tribe of weavers. They have been doing weave, weaving for a millennium. And as I entered, um, as I entered the, the park, the, the National Park of Canyon de Chez in the United States, um, I, I felt this tremendous energy, and it was very much a heart energy. And um, you are in the canyon, and this spider rock is so immense, and it goes all, you know, all the way up from the, the floor of the canyon. And there are two rocks, and it almost looks like a man and a woman side by side. And, um, uh, and I had this vision of a butterfly, a 
big green butterfly coming and sitting on my hand. And so I, I just, I, and, um, and at the same time I thought of my, my spiritual teacher, a Buddhist teacher named Nanjal Rinpoche, and, and sort of all of, the, all of the study that I had been doing and research into weaving uh, over the past, over the previous 10 years sort of came together in that moment, and, um, and, and this design sort of came into my mind, and as soon as I got home, I started it. So these are the, you know, these wonderful rock formations of um, Arizona, uh, New Mexico, and, um, and I called this offering at Spider Rock because it was like the, it was like this butterfly sort of came as an offering. And the, 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 one, the wonderful part about understanding and researching a little bit of the Navajo ideas of weaving is that they believe that weaving is a sacred path because it transmits the energy of peace. And this is very easy to understand, actually. After you've woven, I've woven for almost 40 years now, and um, when you weave, Every movement is followed by its opposite. So you move from right to left, followed by left to right. You go in, out, back, forth, up, down, left, right. And this continual repetition of one movement followed by its opposite actually creates balance and harmony in the weaver. And then that's transmitted to the viewer. And so people say when they look at my tapestries, they experience sort of calm. And that's because they are filled with this weaving energy. Um, if you weave on a piece for three to six months, you know, that energy is transmitted into the into the fibers that carry that energy and and just the actual mechanics.